Welcome to the Jungus Games update vlog for March 2020. As you can see, I'll be covering a few different things today, so feel free to skip ahead to the part that most interests you, or stick around for the whole thing. Now, I would like to mention that if you would prefer to listen to this video instead of watch it, that you could do so by searching for the John Gets Games podcast wherever you normally listen to podcasts. Now, before we jump into the updates, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to directly support the channel and the creation of future vlogs like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com slash support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with cool bonuses like voting on a couple of the videos that I film each month. Alright, let's now jump into the updates, and we can start with a very brief Patreon campaign update. There were seven new people who joined in over the last month, which is awesome to see. Uh, unfortunately, the overall amount of support went down a decent bit because of some big deletions, but that is something that just happens from time to time. Uh, this does mean that the campaign is about $138 a month away from unlocking me doing live question and answer vlogs every single month, and I am pretty excited to do those, so hopefully uh, the overall amount of support will go back up in the next month instead of down, but, you know, there's always going to be ebbs and flows with these things. All right, let's now move on to the uh, first out of two general updates that I have for the uh, channel. And the first one has to do with a microphone. <laughs> now, if you've been listening to these vlogs for a while, you will know that uh, this is probably like the eighth time I've talked about getting a new microphone. Uh, maybe that's an exaggeration, but um, I have purchased a new microphone and this one is a shotgun mic. Uh, it's right here above the camera, so you just can't see it. And before that, I have been using a Blue Yeti for years and years. I experimented with a shotgun mic that I borrowed from my sister about a year ago and decided not to buy one, but now I've bought a new one and I think I'm going to stick with it. Uh, a big reason for that is because while editing, I would just hear this really high-pitched ringing sound that it seemed like I was the only person who could hear and it just drove me bonkers. And about three weeks ago, I was just so frustrated by it that I went onto Amazon and I just bought a shotgun microphone for about $200. Uh, I got it in and I've experimented with it and I do like the way it sounds, but that ringing sound was still there, which I found really frustrating. Now, fortunately, there is a good uh, happy ending to this story, and that is that I complained about this onto Twitter, and then my friend Gil Hova uh, mentioned that um, I should send him an audio sample, and he would try to help me out. Uh, now, he is a designer and publisher uh, behind uh, Formal Ferret Games, a uh, really, really nice guy who I've uh, met many times at conventions, and uh, he also, I think, has a another career in audio engineering or audio stuff. So I sent him a piece of audio, and um, within like a, a few hours, he emailed me back and said, hey, if you tune down these specific frequencies, that should be able to minimize that ringing sound. Uh, he wasn't exactly sure why the ringing sound was there. Maybe there's something strange in my studio that is uh, resonating, and I just can't figure out what it is. But either way, I tried that, and that ringing sound went largely away. Uh, I still kind of hear it because, well, I'm just predisposed to hearing it these days, but it is almost entirely gone, which is awesome. Awesome. So uh, this is a big thank you to my friend Gil Hova for uh, kind of uh, rescuing my sanity to a certain extent, uh, even though other people couldn't hear this. I listen to every one of these videos that I make as I'm editing, and uh, yeah, it was driving me bonkers. So yeah, I'm going to stick with this shotgun microphone. I think the overall audio quality sounds better than with the Yeti. It's definitely a little bit different, and I have um, messed around with the audio settings a decent bit. I am not a professional. I am absolutely faking it until I make it with audio stuff, and um, it continues to be a big mystery about how to make audio sound amazing. Uh, I feel like I listen to other people's uh, content, you know, specifically board game people on YouTube, and I'm like, man, they're audio sounds great. And then I listen to my stuff as I'm editing and I'm like, man, it sounds like I'm in a tin box or, uh, you know, it's super muffled or too high pitch or too low pitch. And I try to mess with it and I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. And the next day I go back and listen to it. And I'm like, no, this sounds awful. So I think it's really easy to um, kind of fall down a rabbit hole with trying to fix these things. So at the moment, I think I'm happy with where things are at. Uh, feel free to let me know if it sounds better or worse to you. Uh, if it sounds worse, I'm really not sure what to do about it. But either way, uh, that's going to wrap this update up, which means I now want to talk about the other one. And that is more of a general update about uh, a bit of the strange uh, scheduling that I've been having coming out with uh, my videos. Uh, I went, uh, looks like, 11 days without publishing a video uh, last week in February. And uh, in general, February was definitely lower on video output than other months. Now, the reason of that is because I have been working my butt off making videos for March and now April. Uh, I kind of over... 
overscheduled uh, myself for those months and I had a well scheduled out February, but then um, some of these projects that booked for me, well, they kept delaying. And so my uh, mid to late February videos were suddenly now early March videos. And then a few weeks later, now they are late March videos or even early April videos. So I have been working on a lot of these videos. In fact, I have uh, five videos fully recorded. Three of them are literally on YouTube, just one click away from going public and the other two need to get edited. So that is a, a ton of content that I've been working on. But while I have been doing that, there's been a lull in the amount of content coming out actually on the channel. So I guess uh, this is me saying that uh, this lull is going to stop because obviously I have a bunch of work done already as I am trying to gear up for March and also April. Um, I will talk about this more next month, but April is kind of scaring me with the uh, overall schedule with the amount of stuff that I said yes to and then the amount of other stuff that got delayed into April. So I'm uh, working very hard to make sure I don't uh, find myself in a jam later on, but it does mean there's been a lull. Um, in addition to um, me working so hard on these videos. I have also had some uh, rough shifts with my other job <laughs> uh, last week or at some point in the middle of that lull. I had a week where I was only going to work two days at the other job and then uh, three days for John Gets Games, which is somewhat standard. Uh, but unfortunately, one of those days at my other job turned into a 20 hour shift where I got home at five in the morning. So obviously I was planning on working for like eight hours on the next day, which was a Wednesday. And I clocked like two and a half hours because I was just, um, I was just gone. <laughs> I was so tired and I had so much trouble getting uh, the motivation to work because not only is my other job sometimes long with its shifts, but it's very physical. So it was, I was kind of exhausted overall. And honestly, it took a couple days before I felt totally normal again. It was the Friday where I got super back to uh, productivity. And so that also slowed things down a little bit. And uh, yeah, so um, balancing all this stuff is tricky. I've actually already told my other job to essentially not schedule me at all for April because there is so much coming in and I am kind of concerned about it. So uh, I will essentially be full time for the month of April to uh, handle everything that's coming. But um, either way, I think that's going to wrap up the uh, updates. So now let's go into the shifting shelf. Now, here's where I talk about the new games that I acquired over the last month and the ones that I've removed from my collection. And I don't have a ton to talk about, as you can see. Uh, I did not receive that many games and I only pulled one off of the shelf. Uh, so the one that is leaving is Call to Adventure. Uh, this is a game that I, uh, I believe I covered it in an impressions vlog and I did, I'm pretty sure I sponsored tutorial uh, playthrough for this one. It was a little while ago and my brain is a little bit addled, but um, this was a, a pretty neat uh, tableau building game where you were uh, taking things which would give you combos and whatnot, but thematically it was all about progressing through a uh, role-playing game type life. Like you start as a uh, child or a kid and you have certain motivations based off of cards that you have. And those motivations are thematically interesting, but also thematically tie into the mechanical actions that you're doing. Like, oh, you know, I have a you know really bad childhood. So uh, darkness icons come over here and it can actually give you perks or whatnot. Um, so you're trying to build up this kind of story of the, uh, the traits that you have and the things that you fight and the obstacles that you overcome. And I thought it was fine. Uh, I played it at least once, maybe twice, and I just haven't found myself coming back to it. Um, I have a lot of interesting tableau building games. So um, I, I think that there's some cool stuff going on here, but not quite enough for me to keep it around. I just don't really see myself playing it again. And it's a neat game. So I figure it should get moved on to somebody else's collection where they will uh, have a shot to actually play it instead of having it just sit on the shelf. Uh, now, in terms of the new games that I acquired, that appears to to be four. Uh, the first one of these is Dominations. And the reason I got that is because I did a sponsored tutorial and playthrough for that. Uh, that one came out uh, just last week. And um, at this point, I've not played this one with anyone else. So uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be hitting the impressions vlog. But if you are curious about it, uh, definitely check out the tutorial. It is a kind of uh, triangle domino building civilization style game with this pretty complex kind of tech tree that you build out with matching colors. Uh, the next game that I acquired is called Man muss auch gönnen können which is obviously German. Uh, I'll just call it Gone and Conan at this point. And uh, I've not played this one yet. Um, I got this one from Amazon.de and it is a roll and write style game where you um, fill in little cards in front of you that give you points at the end of the game or give you modifications. And every time you re-roll dice in this game, your opponents all get to mark stuff off on their uh, areas. So this is, uh, I hope, the kind of roll and write game that I enjoy where obviously everybody does things on everybody's turn. But I also like roll and write games where one person is the primary player when 
and everyone else does like secondary things on the primary player's turn. I haven't had a chance to play this one yet, um, and I am certainly looking forward to it. Uh, I also picked up uh, Underwater Cities New Discoveries, which is the first expansion to Underwater Cities. Um, now, I generally am not crazy about getting expansions for games. Uh, oftentimes, I feel like they overcomplicate things, and I find myself not playing games with expansions. But uh, in this game, there are, or in this expansion, there are, I think, four modules, and three of them, I don't see why I would not always play with them. Uh, one of them is just shuffle these cards into the decks. They don't even make the game more complicated, they just add more variety, so why wouldn't I do that? Uh, another one adds some singular asymmetric um, assistance that you start the game with. I love asymmetry, so sure, that sounds great. Uh, and also the game comes with these triple layer boards to kind of inset everything into. Now it also comes with this um, this uh, museum module with a big extra board and extra tokens and whatnot, and I, I will likely never actually play with that. Oh, there's also a, a quick start mechanism where you um, actually skip one of the 10 turns in the game. So it's only uh, one tenth faster, but this is a pretty long game. So having that is good. Uh, now I haven't had a chance to play this yet, but I love underwater cities. So I am very much excited to try with the expansion uh, with it a little bit quicker and adding some asymmetries and more card variety. I love the idea of all of those things. This appears to be the kind of expansion I like where there is not a bunch of new rules overload to actually get into it. Uh, now, the last uh, game that I got this month was Wavelength. Uh, I covered my impressions of this one a month or two ago, and it's a really neat uh, party-style game where you split the room in half, and you are uh, giving guesses about ranges on different things, and I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I actually bought this one so that I could get to the free shipping level for Underwater Cities New Discoveries. Um, the uh, publisher for uh, Underwater Cities actually reached out to me about sending me a press copy, and I declined it because I usually don't cover expansions. Um, but who knows, maybe I'll play it and then decide to actually talk about it in an impressions vlog anyway. I did buy that expansion. Um, it's not cheap overall. It was like 35 or 40 bucks or something like that, which is pretty significant, but there's a lot of stuff in the box and uh, uh, I'm a sucker for underwater cities, so I'm okay with it. Uh, either way, I was talking about Wavelength, wasn't I? <laughs> we really enjoy this game. I've already played my copy several times, uh, so I see this one uh, sticking around and it was like $35 to actually get to that free shipping level uh, on the order, so I'm pretty happy to have that one. Uh, now, yeah, I, that's going to wrap up the shifting shelf. It was uh, not a big month for receiving games. Uh, looks like only one of those was a press copy. I bought the rest of them, which is a little bit unusual these days, but I guess it's uh, early on in the year, and this is not necessarily the time when publishers are uh, releasing a whole bunch of stuff. All right, uh, it's now time to talk about the last thing, which is the upcoming schedule that I have for the channel. Now, looking forward uh, to the weeks uh, 11, 12, 13, and 14, essentially uh, uh, March. <laughs> um, in week 11, obviously, this update vlog is coming out. Uh, and then the Patreon-sponsored playthrough uh, for March is coming out. And that one is going to be Railroad Revolution with the Railroad Evolution expansion. Now, I am in love with this expansion, so I'm really happy that this won the vote. And I've actually fully recorded this already. I just haven't edited it yet. So that's going to be coming out uh, later on in this week. Uh, I'm also planning on putting out an impressions vlog where I will be discussing, I think, three or so games uh, later on in this week, so definitely keep your eyes out for that. In week 12, I am going to be putting out a sponsored tutorial and playthrough for Dark Ages. Now, this is a uh, big 4X uh, civilization style game coming out from Board and Dice. Um, I have fully recorded this one and not fully edited it just yet, so I have a decent amount of work to do on that one still. It's a big game overall. Um, in that week, I'm also going to be putting out a tutorial tutorial playthrough for Lawyer Up, which is also sponsored. Um, that's a two-player only game where one player plays as the defense and the other player plays as the prosecution in like a high drama court battle type thing. Uh, I actually finished this one like three or four weeks ago. It's been sitting on YouTube for a while, so I just need to hit uh, public on that one for people to see it, but I'm waiting for the Kickstarter campaign for that one to go live. Uh, in week 13, I am going to be doing a sponsored tutorial and playthrough for Frosthaven. Uh, now, this is part of the reason why I've been working so hard to try and get ahead because uh, I have not actually received the prototype for this yet. Uh, that's probably going to be coming about eight days or so before I need to actually publish the video. So uh, I'm going to hit the ground hard with this one as soon as it comes out, or at least as soon as it gets to our house. And I'm pretty excited about this, uh, not only because I enjoy Gloomhaven, so I'm curious to see uh, how Frosthaven works, but also because it's almost like a redo of my Gloomhaven-sponsored uh, playthrough that I put out many years ago. Actually, 
that one wasn't sponsored. That was before I started charging for things, interestingly enough. Uh, but either way, that Gloomhaven playthrough that I did is um, easily the most popular video that I've ever done. It's uh, closing on 500,000 views, and most of my videos usually get about 3,000 views. So that's a huge difference overall. Uh, and there are quite a bit of mistakes in that video, so I'm hoping that this time around I can essentially do Gloomhaven again. This is going to be Frosthaven, but I think the mechanics are quite similar. Uh, and I can do it in my new style, where I do a tutorial and and then I do an extended playthrough, and hopefully I'll be a little bit better on the rules, although there's a lot going on in this game. I'm sure I will mess a decent amount of stuff up. So um, I have a lot of work to do with that as soon as it arrives. Uh, and yeah, I'm pretty excited to uh, do a modern style John Gets Games tutorial playthrough for the uh, Gloomhaven mechanics. Uh, now, in that week, I'm also planning on putting out a uh, sponsored playthrough for Sanctuary. Uh, now, this is like a 15 to 25 minute uh, uh, one versus one dueling card play kind of game. Uh, I'm in the middle of recording that. It's actually just off camera on the table at this point. So I'm trying to work ahead for that one as well. Uh, I am also hoping to put out the uh, bonus video, the Patreon sponsored bonus video in that week. I'm not sure what that's going to be just yet. The voting is still happening for that. Uh, now, moving on to week 14, I am putting out a sponsored tutorial for Zulywood, which is a cute one versus one abstract game about uh, competing as a penguin actor in an audition to try and get the role of the little penguin in a movie in Zulywood. It's got a funky theme, but it's a uh, abstract game of uh, running around a map, trying to lay eggs and trying to knock your opponent's penguin eggs off of the board. Uh, now, I've completely finished that one. It is ready to go up on YouTube. Uh, this one was originally going to be published weeks before this, but it has some delays. Uh, now, I'm also going to be putting out a video for Hatairo, which is a sponsored tutorial playthrough. As you can see, I've had a lot of sponsored videos coming out recently, uh, and this one is also completely done. I just have to hit publish on YouTube uh, in order for that one to go out. So it's nice that late in March, I have a lot of uh, content that's already completed so that I can, at that point, start working on the stuff that's coming out in April. Uh, the last thing to do in that week is probably going to be the next update vlog where I discuss April and how crazy busy I am potentially going to be. Uh, hopefully, the schedule goes to plan, like everything I said here, um, I think uh, things certainly could go um, off the line a little bit if some of these videos take longer than they should. And also I might hit more cancellations or at least uh, postponements. I guess nothing is canceled just yet, but uh, with the uh, COVID-19 virus that's happening, that's really affecting uh, the Chinese manufacturing and the board game industry in general. And a couple of these videos have been postponed with their Kickstarter campaigns specifically because of the virus. So it's possible that some of these might get postponed again. But either way, that is what the schedule is looking like for the next four weeks. Uh, so yeah, I think we have reached the end of the vlog. I hope you've enjoyed it. I did not talk a lot compared to some of the other update vlogs that I do. And I'm quite curious to see what things are like in uh, four weeks from now, because there is a lot of work to do and a lot of things overall can change. So yeah, I think that's going to wrap this one up. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you can do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.